Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Saurabh. So let us see this NEET revision 2.4 and see I've written in a bracket your opportunity of revising due to postponement. That window is getting smaller. I hope you know what I mean. So let us start this test. I'm also ready to give the test. All right. A five-year-old boy was squeezing his eyes to look at the blackboard. He was referred for visual acuity testing and he can read only the top letter. First thing you should know what's the top letter. It's not E, A, X. It can be anything. It is 6 by 60. So his vision is 6 by 60. So 6 by 60 means the patient from 6 meters can see the top letter. A normal person can see this from 60 meters. Snellens is based on the concept of minimal angle of resolution. To calculate the minimal angle of resolution you, means the smaller the angle subtended by the letters, the better is the vision. That's why the word is minimal angle of resolution. To calculate the minimal angle of resolution, you just have to reverse the visual acuity. That is 6 by 60 MAR is 10 minutes. But that is only from one segment of the letter. Each letter has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 segments. That is told by Snellens. So if the entire letter angle subtended is asked, then answer of 6 by 60 will be 10 into 5, 50 minutes when the patient is standing at 6 meters. But here I have asked specifically how much angle is updated by each segment. Each segment means only MAR is asked. Answer is 6 by 60 reverse, 60 by 6. That is 10 minutes of arc, not seconds, minutes of arc. That also you should know. That is the answer of the first question. Now this is a picture showing blood in the anterior chamber that is hyphema can be seen due to bleeding of the major arterial circle, minor arterial circle, mostly from the major arterial circle that is the anastomosis of long posterior ciliary and short posterior ciliary and can be seen in blunt trauma. Many conditions but can be seen in blunt trauma like in this 12 year old boy was hit by the cricket ball. Now the blood can block the trabecular meshwork causing secondary open angle glaucoma. Now with blunt trauma, the other so internal pressure is high because of this thing that is true. Now after clearing, there may be polychoria means multiple pupils because in blunt trauma, there can be iridodialysis means separation of the eyes from the periphery. So multiple pupils can be seen. Now if this sign is not clearing, hyphema, <coughs> if it is not resolving, you can drain hyphema, not hypopion. Hypopion is never drained. For hypopion, antibiotics, antifungal is given. Hyphema, the treatment of hyphema is you have to give anti-glaucoma medications to decrease the pressure. You have to give steroids also topical initially to decrease the inflammation inside the eye. And you have to give topical cycloplegia to prevent the ciliary body spasm to prevent the pain. But if it is not resolving hyphema, then you can drain hyphema. But the fourth option is incorrect. After clearing, there will be brownish pigmentation of iris. Why brown? Brownish pigmentation of iris can be seen in trauma, penetrating trauma when iron goes inside the eye. That is hyperpigmentation of the iris. Now, this is blunt trauma, not penetrating trauma. That's why D option is not correct over here. Now, pseudo phakic person means you have done a cataract surgery and you have taken out the natural lens, put an intraocular lens. Now, if you have taken out the natural lens, was reading newspaper means near vision, accommodation. Lens accommodates in the eye. If there is no lens, accommodation is zero, lost. So, anterior curvature of lens, horizontal thickness, anterior chamber becomes shallow. This is for accommodation. There is no accommodation in the pseudo phakic person. So this was just a presence of mind question. A, B, C are true for accommodation which is not there in pseudo -fakic. And yes, that's why there is no accommodation. It requires a plus glass to read the newspaper. That is the correct option over here. Now this is the right fundus picture of a diabetic patient which is given and two yellow signs are there. Now one is a soft, one is a heart exudate. Soft, the other name of soft is known as cotton wool spot. Now, cotton wool is fluffy or it is shiny, small shiny ones. Large fluffy borders are cotton wool spot. That is B. A is a hard exudates like that is exudates lipoproteins are pumping in the outer plexiform layer 
mostly goes into outer plexus layer in a radial manner so a is hard exudate b is soft exudate if they if i ask this this is hemorrhage this is flame hemorrhages also this is ha happening in the level of nerve fiber layer b is soft exudate that is infarction of the nerve fiber layer in a diabetic patient exudation is more so hard exudates are more dot and dot hemorrhages are more because signs in an outer plexiform layer are more involved than signs in the nerve fiber as it is in the class because in exudation the exudates will try to go into that space which has more extravascular and synapse plexiform has more extravascular space reverse is true for hypertension in hypertension soft exudates and flame hemorrhages are more so answer over here is a is hard exudates b is soft exudates now left homonymous hemianopia without macular sparing now why don't many people have answered this question occipital lobe is without in your blind spot this is how do you make the mistake in the exam this is without macular sparing with macular sparing then is occipital lobe right occipital lobe this is without macular sparing that is optic tract optic chasm will have bitemporal hemianopia parietal will have contralateral homonymous quadrantanopia inferior pi on the floor Occipital lobe has contralateral homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing. But is without macular sparing the answer is optic tract. Now pupil size in ADS pupil ciliary ganglion region is there. In third nerve palsy both are involved in the efferent part of the light. Light if you throw the light in one eye, optic nerve takes impulse and third nerve takes impulse back. And third nerve takes impulse via ciliary ganglion short ciliary, short ciliary nerves pupil constriction. So third nerve palsy is there, ciliary ganglion region is there, pupil is dilated. So ADs is dilated pupil, third nerve palsy is dilated pupil. Atropine is cycloplegia, all cycloplegia is the pupil dilated as mediatic. Answer is Horner's view. Horner's is a problem in sympathetic problem. In sympathetic fibers dilate the pupil. So in Horner's the pupil is small, meiotic pupil. That is the answer over here. How to differentiate ADs from third nerve palsy? Near reflex is absent in third nerve palsy. Near reflex is present in ADs pupil. Because of accommodation fibers are spared. And diluted pilocarpin test is for ADs people. If you put a diluted pilocarpin in an ADs people, it will constrict. In the entire world, diluted pilocarpin can constrict only one people, that is ADs people. Here the answer is honest people. Also in old age, also people become small. Now this is the cataract surgery making a circular opening in the anterior capsule of the lens, that is anterior capsular excess. Here dye is not used. This is reflex coming from the retina. This is an animation picture. But which dye can assist capsular excess was a question. Trip and blue dye is a non-toxic dye which can stain the anterior capsule during cataract surgery during anterior capsular excess which can be used. Now this question. Normal tension glaucoma means of course the IOP is normal less than 21. But an angle is open. It's an open angle spectrum. IOP is within 21. But Glaucoma means optic disc change and visual field changes are present. So optic disc is normal, false. IOP check is of no use. How will you know it's a normal tension glaucoma if you can't check the IOP? And even if the IOP is normal, that normal IOP is normal for you, for example, 16, but not normal for this patient. This patient has a vascular theory of glaucoma, not the mechanical theory. Vascular theory means there is decreased perfusion of the optic nerve. That even the normal pressure is not normal for this patient. That 16 pressure, for example, is not normal for him. 16 is causing optic disc change. So even the management in normal tension glaucoma is further lowering the pressure. By medical management, prostaglandins, then add other medical uh, drugs, laser trabeculoplasty, and then surgery, trabeculectomy, or any drainage device. So management is not observation. Management is start the medical management. So B, C, D are wrong. And it comes in an open angle spectrum, you should know this. Three things come under, under open angle spectrum. One is primary open angle glaucoma, one is normal tension glaucoma, and one is ocular hypertension. That's the answer of this question. <clears throat> now, who are adductors? Adductors means who bring the eye to the medial side. Medial adductors is adductor. Superiors, uh, recti are adductors. So, superior adductors, inferior adductors are adductors theoretically. And obliques are abductors. That's the answer over here. 
it is a theoretical question it is a theoretical action anatomical action of uh, muscles mr is adductor sr and ir are adductors io is a abductor io now this device uh, again i know many people must have made mistake in this now this is the hertz exothermometer everyone knows this it can be used for measuring proptosis yes when the eyeball is coming out and also it can be used for measuring when eyeball is going inside means endothermus so blood fracture is endothermus thyroid disease proptosis optic meningioma proptosis now many people say the horner syndrome also we have uh, learned uh, endothermus no horner syndrome has pseudo endothermus it looks apparent endothermus it looks endothermus because of ptosis so horner does not have proptosis does not have endothermus this device is of no use in horner syndrome that's the 10 questions i hope you have done good thanks for listening best wishes